Hello and welcome to another edition of Scale Geodium Reviews. And today on the bench you can see that we have the Mines R32 GTR. And those of you that have watched other videos on the channel will remember that my very first review was the Mines R33 GTR. And this is actually a sealed box as well. This has never been opened. Um, if we just have a look under here, you can see that tape is still in place on both sides. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a treat for me because I've never seen inside this box before. Just to go back into some detail, um, Mines is a Japanese tuning company for those that don't know. Um, one of my favourite um, sports tuning companies. Um, they tend to modify the car's engine and chassis, uh, leaving the, the, out, the exterior of the car as standard uh, as they can. They, they, don't, they only mess with things that they know can make better. I think the most... A uh, recent notable one that uh, everybody would know about is the uh, Mines R34 Skyline, which was uh, nicknamed the Response Monster. Uh, there are videos of it on YouTube, and it was an absolute beast. Anyway, so without further ado, shall we see what's inside the box? And voila. So as you can see, everything is still in its bags. Uh, we've got this bubble wrap here, which we're going to remove. So I need to remove all the packaging so we can get to the sprues a lot easier. So through the magic of television, and there we have it. OK, let's start off with the glass sprue. Uh, we have the front lights with the uh, projector lenses in. And we also have the backlights just there and the reverse lights just there also got what I think are spotlights for the front bumper maybe or they don't look like indicators that's for sure uh, we've also got this one piece um, window bit um, which is quite rare you don't usually see this with a big cutout in the middle I guess to save plastic but in this case they, they kept it all there but it's uh, nicely marked out so you can see where you need to paint next up we have part of the interior so we have the uh, the interior section uh, not massively detailed it is uh, kind of a typical Fujimi kit they don't go massively detailed on the interiors of these because to be honest you can't really see much anyway from the outside um, the seats have a nice texture on them though I've not seen that before because the rest of it is kind of shiny plastic whereas that's kind of a, uh, a matte finish to it um, we obviously have a very detailed center console as you can see there um, steering column handbrake rear window screen wiper for the rear uh, rear window gear stick and the ring mirrors so the center console and a gtr steering wheel although i don't think we need that in this kit because i think there's a second next up <laughs> we'll quickly go to the chassis and here it is uh, it is quite nicely detailed. It uh, is very, very, very basic um, for a chassis, but unlike the R33 GTR Mines Edition that we um, saw earlier in the channel, it does actually have steering on this particular car. We have a metal axle in the kit for the rear, but we do have steering, so that's a, that's a nice addition. Also, see, this is going to be very, very easy to cut out if you were going to decide to put a, a fully built RB26 from uh, any of the third party kit manufacturers or even from the Tamiya cars in there instead yeah but yeah once painted up that could be nicely detailed but again very um very basic chassis okay next up we have the the larger black screw where we can see if I flip it around the correct way we have the uh, front and rear subframes we can see that there's space for a metal axle on the rear one and as mentioned this this one does have steering so you've got the steering arm there um, quite a bit of flash on these bits as we can see so we've got some front we've got a front suspension and steering set up here and we have the rear suspension and disc brakes um, the kit is very very basic in detail but it, uh, it does the job obviously once it's painted up we have two different exhausts here for the standard car fuel tank uh, exhaust pipe rear view mirror and we've got the two uh, front window 
screen wipers the uh, number plates are there there's a lot of flash on this kit i mean it is, an, it is a very early kit i think it was made about 2000 so the kit's about 19 years old now um but it is a little bit disappointing with the amount of flash that's on there flash as we know is extremely easy to trim doesn't take two seconds to come off but you know there are plenty of things to do with the model kit getting flash off the parts um doesn't need to be one of them so as i thought we have a exhaust and an exhaust tip here we've got the rear silencer and exhaust tip um for the mines spec car we have some sports seats so um so i don't think there is any other seats on the kit no there's not um so we also have a steering boss with a steering wheel uh, another gear shift it looks like a shorter shift a front mount cooler and a rear wing blade by the look of it that previous sprue was actually the v-spec sprue so it more than likely comes with the r33 as well which would explain the rear blade next up we've got the the last white sprue we have the the rear spec style front bumper we have a bonnet lip the uh, the ground fix for just in front of the rear arches. We have a radiator, uh, the main spoiler for the boot, and also a mini spoiler which actually tucks into just underneath. When you plant this one in, you can fit that in just underneath it at the back, so you've got like a dual spoiler setup. Nicely detailed, a little bit of flash again, but it, it is an old kit, you can forgive it for that. Now onto the body. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, nice looking body. Um, very shiny this would need to be sanded down quite considerably before you put paint on it because um, it's more than likely got a lot of release agents still on there um, and therefore when you paint it the paint probably would not adhere as uh, as nicely as you would want it to so definitely going to need to be sanded down at least so we can get the paint to stick um, it is nicely detailed um, not a difficult body to uh, to mark up I'm um, just looking for the mould lines. They are really quite well hidden on this car. I think they are following the crease down uh, from the back lights and the bumper across the top of the car. Well, I can't even see it there. There is a very faint mould line just there, so nothing much to sand down. You can feel it when you rub your finger across it, though. That then comes down the side of the car. I can feel it just on the corner of that it's not actually going down the bonnet crease it's actually coming along the crease of the wheel arch there oh, sorry the wheel fender the front fender and and then down past the lights so that would also need a bit of preparation work as you can probably just see it there just in the light where it's casting a bit of a shadow that's where the the mold lines are but other than that no nice uh nice detailed body Couple of miscellaneous bits we have the uh, poly caps we actually have two sets of those in this kit which is great because you can never have too many poly caps spare we also have the metal tube for well metal pole for the rear axle and then onto these uh, these beautiful 18 or 19 inch i would say um, possibly a uh, possibly 19s uh, down at this scale anyway BBS LM wheels uh, the tires the tires were actually fitted when I took them out of the packet so this is how it's come um, obviously you can push them on properly and see what they would actually look like um, it is staggered as you can see we have two different sizes front and back tires are beautifully detailed as they always are on these kits and um, actually a really nice set of wheels we do have some spaces there as well to keep it in place if, if needed. They are different sizes, ever so slightly got some thicker ones here, medium and then really thin ones. So you can get the, the spacing uh, just right. Sometimes when you build these kits, the offset uh, is a little bit terrible and the wheels are hidden underneath those arches. Like they're trying to hide from a scary movie or something. But um, with those spaces, you can definitely get some poke right there. So it sounds good. On to the decals, the beautiful Mines decals. The, uh, excuse the pun, signature mines decal there, the squiggle. Uh, we've got the, the boost gauges and everything that would come with the GTR and also the standard Nismo clusters. Uh, mines Motorsport, the stripes. You can see, as always with these old kits, it's terrible, but you can't help it. They are starting yellow, even though they're in a, 
in an airtight container they, they just age it's just a matter of fact but to be honest it's not going to make any difference when it goes on it's still going to look good but yeah lovely okay now onto the instructions Got some other bits here um, not entirely sure what that is some sort of help number i guess if there's any issues with the kit we've got here a i guess that's a returns label um obviously the box was unopened so that's all in pristine condition but we'll move that out of the way and put those just there okay moving on to the instructions um the japanese love their characters when they make their instructions as you can see they'll keep they always keep it friendly um making it very easy to understand what they're talking about um so just be careful obviously when you're making these kits there are some sharp edges on some of them and of course you're using knives and things so please be wary um, as we can see at the bottom here we have the uh, the layout of what is needed all these gray parts we don't need um it's not showing that blade is grayed out but i can't see how it's used in this kit so i'm still guessing that's going to be for the 33 edition of the car pulley caps uh, the wheels tires things like that okay and if we then place this down these are very short instructions this isn't a very difficult car to build of course the first thing we've got is how the car will end up when it's finished and it does look good i mean it's it i'm really looking forward to doing this kit and there will be a full build video in it once i've done it and it's other than color but to be honest i am still heading towards the traditional white color um, because obviously that's a, a mains staple that's a mines staple sorry a mains um, so first of all we start off with the with the front suspension it's uh, obviously female wheels male stud um, normal thing uh, that then gets bolted to the chassis um, glued I should say then the uh, the front subframe comes on then down to the rear you've got the rear chassis the rear brakes and suspension set up the fuel tank the metal bar that goes in with the wheels um, it almost feels like it's going to take five minutes to build this once you've painted it. it it is a very simple kit but of course it does look like it's going to look like a beautiful curbside kit once it's finished um, obviously as always you have the, um, the color coding h2 h8 uh, which in this case would be black and silver depending on what part you're you're doing the, if we go back here you've got all the paint codes there And uh, obviously once the car is finished, it shouldn't take too long to put it all together. Um, yeah, a very simple and an easy kit to make. It, it probably would make a very, very good starter kit uh, in its standard form. Probably not the mines version because they are getting quite rare now, so collectors are picking them up. Um, but a standard Fujimi 32 um, would make a very good kit for a starter. So if you're thinking of starting one out and you want to do a Skyline, um, yeah, definitely go and pick one up. So that concludes really this video uh, on the Mines R32 GTR. Uh, it is a, a beautiful car, um, plenty of videos and resource on YouTube and on the net about them if you want to get some proper reference material for doing some good detail at work. So if you like this video, please um, subscribe and leave a comment down below if that's okay. Um, let me know any uh, suggestions and they're always welcome. Any comments, negative, positive, uh, you know, always happy to take those those things on board. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next review. Thanks very much.